Michael Yow Show. All right, we're so recording. Happens on the cloud. Oh man, so much stuff happens on the cloud. It's all in the cloud. Like this is recorded all on the. the cloud. Yeah, it's all in the clouds. So don't mess mm -hmm. up. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Just don't screw it up, Serena Swan. That's it. Um, what are you drinking, by the way? I is it the mug that makes you wonder, or the contents? No, it's the mug because uh, let me guess because that mug is very. Um, I don't know the right word because I don't have a huge vocabulary, but I would say uh, a green tea is in it. A like it would be it would be really bad if just water was in it because that that mug deserves more than just water you know but like a green tea maybe a, a black tea with lemon uh, uh okay, a it's, like, it's half bougie half not so it it's it's iced coffee in here i have a little iced coffee um but it is a iced oat milk latte with lavender iced oat milk <laughs> with latte with la the lavender makes it bougie the oat milk I know. I I so mm. I left it in the fridge. So it's, you know. I do like oat milk. It has a lot of sugar in it though. You know that, right? Does it really? Look on the back of the box. It's ridiculous. Shit. That's why it tastes so good. Cause it has so much sugar in it. It's so good. It's you know what's, like, that's all. Is this how we're starting the show, by the way, talking about the sugar? Oh no, we're live. Milk. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> This is a real conversation. This is not an interview, Serena. I've known you forever. This is a conversation. This is how all podcasts should be. Just talking. Yeah. Uh, back in the day when we lived together, I'm pretty sure you drank milk. I'm just putting it up. No, there. I did not because I've always been pretty lactose. Sure. Oh, no. okay. Never mind. I drank, I drank almond milk. Oh, yeah. I think we were on that train together how we thought almond milk was the best. And then coconut milk came out and now oats the shit. Yeah, oat, oat is good, but yeah. my new jam that has what? almost no sugar in it, cashew milk. That's what I drink. Cashew outside. Have you, uh, have you had a cashew latte? It's ridiculous. I feel like I've had a macadamia nut. Oh my God, uh, now that's bougie. That, I'm, I'm just saying. Cashew versus a macadamia nut, same, same. Yeah, cashew has half the sugar or maybe even a third of that sugar of that oat milk. I'm just trying to keep you in shape, Sorinda. I'm just trying to keep you in shape. Thanks, Bill. Thanks. You know. That's right. So, you I know, so, ruined it, Michael. No, I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> did okay. I ruin it? Okay. No, I'll still drink it. So, a scale of one to 10, how was uh -huh. I as a roommate? You know what? I'll be honest. The first thing that popped into my head was like a four. And then I was like, why? I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's so not accurate. I just thought I'd be accurate with my, like, I'd, I'd out my inner monologue. No, you were like a nine, like at what, least a nine. What is this for business? What, where do we? I just popped into my head, literally. I think you probably got a four for fun level and you got a nine for like your sleep routine. Oh yes, I was very boring. I was a four. Very I would go boring. to sleep at eight thirty, nine o'clock. Yeah, but I was I loved that. Although I did want to like hang out more. I was like, everybody's like, "Where's your roommate?" I'm like, "He's sleeping. That's all he's doing." Or he's practicing his comedy. Yay, my comedy! I know. Going places. You know, yeah. we're trying to do things on AGT, Serena Swan. I mean, you are doing things. I actually almost. I what? Almost, I, I have a tissue here, and I was gonna start and be like. Oh my God! Oh, yeah. Here we go. So I'm so happy to be on your show. <laughs> <laughs> but now that I've done it, whatever. Uh, <laughs> That's how I wanted to open the show. No. Was to be like, I can't, I can't believe. No, you deserve it. I actually understand the tears because, I mean, how long ago was it when we lived together? That was like. Well, I've only lived in LA for I, I believe 12 years, 13 years now. Eight years ago. Eight years ago. Yeah. You've been you've been solidly up in your game for eight years and watching the commitment at that level and watching, you know, just you kind of hone in on the skill and starting to believe that you're funny because you're fucking hilarious and like bringing in 
just like personal aspects. And I remember when you made fun of me in Miami and everybody laughed at my laugh. Yeah. That? Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> you'll know where my roommate is because you'll hear her go. <laughs> yeah. You have a terrible laugh. I mean, <laughs> it's awful laugh. Like I, I that's no. why I, that's why I stopped inviting you to comedy shows because it's like, you know, <laughs> what is that? You know what? Everybody laughed at that. I feel like I'm part of a, I feel like I'm a good person to have there too. Just because you one, I've always got, and two, you can always make fun of me and you can make fun of my laugh, which is probably why you got a four as a roommate because you always made me laugh, which means I always sounded like a fucking gerbil. Yeah. Just like, <laughs> that is true. You, you... <laughs> That is true. You do sound like a gerbil. You do sound like a gerbil. Uh, so uh, how are you getting through this pandemic? I am currently sitting in Vancouver, Canada. Um, the reason why you're making fun of my Wi-Fi is I'm in the middle of the woods. Um, you're like, that's ghetto. I was like, no, no, I'm literally, I, if you see me keep looking out there, it's because the past two mornings I've had to chase bears out of my yard. Wait, you're chasing bears out of your yard or you're watching them? The first day I watched them and then I was told that you have to like make loud noises. So I have a pan, like a, a, a pot and a spoon and I just like, okay. bang, like you made you're it, not allowed here. You made yeah, it not- sound way, way more <laughs> adventurous. Like you were actually chasing, all I'm imagining is you chasing a bear out of your yard. And you're like, no, I just grab a pot and pan. So you're not really chasing it. You're just making a bunch okay, of noise. Fine. You can just strip all my cool points away. You're right. I know. I look like a housewife with like a pot in a pan being like, ew, get out of my yard. No. They're they're big. Do you want to see a picture of one? Yes, please. Show me a picture of your bear that's in your front yard. Oh, you say that? Like you're just so, okay. So I didn't have a picture of him in my backyard. This is him in my front yard. Oh yeah. That could do some damage. Right? Look at him. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Now, did I know, you, he, he was big. He was a big guy. Now, did you take that picture before you chased it out of your yard? <laughs> that was after I did. That was the problem, is that he comes in the back and then he walks around to the front of the house. So that was the time that I hid. Oh, that was I, I closed all my doors and I was like, oh my God. And then I took a picture and then I sent it to all my friends and they were like, yo, you can't just like not do anything. You have to scare them away. Otherwise, they're just going to keep coming back. Mm, okay. See, I learned something. Now, did you there learn? You now, did you learn from your friends? Like, if you're happening to go out and check the mail or do a walk, and a bear jumps yes. out, what are you supposed to do? So you play need dead. to find that out. No, you're supposed to play dead. But the thing is, is you walk with bear bells. So, or like, um, like, you know, Buddha, my dog. He has the little tags on his thing. You just walk, and it makes that noise, and they're fine. They don't come around you. These are black bears. They're not aggressive. It's not like a grizzly bear where you're like. Which side of me do I want to get eaten first? Yeah. This is like, you can okay. kind of scream and yell. Away. Yeah. So, so when did you get out of America? Uh, like a couple of weeks ago. I've been no, there so, the whole time. So did they make you quarantine? Were they very strict when you came in? You have to be somewhere 14 days? Yeah. That's why I went to the woods. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm out. I was like, this is crazy. So yeah, uh-huh. so it's, it's, but it's good. It's good how strict it is here. Like you have to give your phone number and you have to give your address and they can come and check up on you and you sign papers. And it's like, it's, it's, I mean, it's very, very strict. It's a $750,000 fine. If you, if you like, uh, yeah, if you go out or three years in jail. Oh, wow. Re- three years. Yeah. of Wow. Yeah, because here's the thing. It's like if you knowingly put yourself in a situation where you can contract COVID and then you go out and you're just like at a supermarket and you give somebody's father or grandfather COVID and they end up dying, you're responsible. Like you've uh-huh. knowingly done that. So it's like, I, I think, you know, while it's a terrifying consequence, I think it's equal to, you know, the action. So for me, I'm like, yeah, stay home. It's two weeks. It's fine. Like, watching you go through it, you know, my mom had COVID, like watching people go through it is like no joke. And it, the problem with it is that the asymptomatic side of things kind of makes it seem a little less scary. And that's not, that's not a good thing. So the government here is like, any point, point you're gonna not be afraid of this, we'll put some crazy uh, consequences in there. Now, did you get tested when you got there? Yeah, yeah, so I went and got the brain swab, which was like- Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, 
So she was like, it'll just feel like a tickle. I was like, you liar. <laughs> like my eyes were watering. I was like, I'm going to sneeze for days. It was aggressive. I've also had the blood test. And then I've also had the throat swab as well. I've done, I just, yeah. So you haven't had it yet. I haven't had it yet, which is crazy because my mom had it. And I flew my mom out to LA to live with me during quarantine so that she was safe. And she got it. And I like lived with her the entire time that she was like totally contagious. Wait a minute. Do you think she got it in LA or she came with it from Canada? She got it. We think she got it on the plane. So when she got her blood test, um, there was like IgG and IgM. So she was just starting to, her body was just starting to um, have a response. Um, and she had been in uh, the States for already like three and a half weeks. So she wouldn't have... She wouldn't have mm. had it at that for like a month. So she had she, already been there. And she's okay? She's totally good. Yeah, she's fine. She ended up getting antibodies, so she's feeling amazing. But like, I mean, it was in my house. People were like freaked out. They're like, I'm going to get it from an apple. I was like, yo, my mom's like, I don't <laughs> have it. I'm not, I'm not sure why. Like, I feel great. And I'm like... Okay. But yeah, no. And I helped our friend Oliver. I helped him out when he had it. And like, I've been around it a lot. I, I had pneumonia in um, November, so I was supposed to be high risk, but I'm, hmm. uh, I'm just staying safe. And Lucky staying you. And Lucky you. Just be careful. I'm being super careful. I mean, that's the thing is like, I, I wasn't going in the house. I was like dropping off food outside and stuff for my friends that, you know, have, have had it um, because of seeing what you went through. Like, it's no joke. Like, you just oh, have yeah. to be there be smart yeah, yeah it was horrible it was like I, yeah. you know my mom beat it in a day and like different Your people will oh yeah i gave it to my mom too stop it yeah she beat it in a day and you know my mom so now she talks shit to me she like i beat in one yeah. day i beat in one day take take you eight days she's amazing i remember going to where was that where was the crab place that we went to in in miami remember oh joe it, stone crab so stone crab and just watching her, she was like, she's just like just a beast. She was just oh, yeah. like sitting there like, oh, I'm like, I love this woman. She's amazing. She's amazing. She's she, amazing. Beats, she beats everything, breast cancer, whatever, whatever it is, she beats it. She beats it. So okay. I want to, I want to talk about you. Uh, yes. You're, you're in the woods right now. Uh, you got a big <laughs> show coming out, <laughs> Corner. I do. I do, yeah. It's on CW. It's a comedy. It's like, right now, I was like, everybody's feeling like watching a show called Coroner right now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, there's a lot of levity to it. There's a lot of like humanity to it. It's actually kind of one of the perfect shows to watch right now because it's about living in a time that may not be the easiest, but watching somebody who's cracked but not broken kind of make their way through it, um, which I love. So it's, it is actually quite a perfect show to binge watch right now. How tough was it for you to find a character? Because I know you have a big process you go through. Did you have to live with it for a while before you start shooting? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm a bit of an autodidact. So I went in and like read everything I possibly could. And then I did, because my character suffer, suffers from mental illness, she suffers from anxiety and panic attacks. It was something that when I've ever experienced things that, anxiety, I had to like go back and like remember where it was in my body and like, if the anxiety was around a trauma or an experience, what was that? And then from there, study like panic attacks, like watch what people do when they panic, it feels like they can't breathe. So your head goes up and it all of the pain and it is in your face and in your kind of jaw. And sometimes it can make you feel like you're underwater. So you'll see my character, she like pops her ears a little bit and you can see the levels of her um, anxiety come together. So she has like little facial twitches and things like that that I had to build into my character of, of being able to really show and not trivialize mental illness. Because if I suffered from a panic attack or panic attacks and I watched a show and my character was like, oh, I just had a panic attack and it was nothing. <laughs> like, what are you doing? That's not representing who I am. And we need to represent all levels of mental illness, not just the ones that we see, you know, where somebody's in an insane asylum or being like, that chick's crazy. You're like, no, we, we all can cry our eyes out and be having the worst day ever. And somebody calls us and we go, hey, how are you? Good? You know what I mean? We have the capacity to compartmentalize. And so showing a character that can do that 
is I think really important. And then I went and saw an autopsy. Um, just oh, to make sure. how was that in real life? I drank my coffee. Mm -hmm. It was good. Oh, Buddha. Buddha's crying. Oh, beside Buddha. Me. Hi, hi to Uncle Yo. Oh. Hi, Boo. Hi, Buddha. <laughs> 13 and a half now. Can you believe that? Hi. Oh, hi. 13 and a half. It's insane. That dog it's has traveled more than me. It has more passport stamps than me. I tell you that. I wish I had uh, like passport or uh, air miles for him. Can you look at this <laughs> uncle? Oh, you're so handsome. <laughs> suddenly, suddenly the interview just took a very, very weird I'm Like what yeah. just happened? Oh, it's so sweet, boo. Um, yeah, how was the autopsy? It was amazing. It was like, I mean, we live inside of our bodies our entire life, right? And when do we ever truly know what's in there? Like my brain well, saw- When would you want to know that? Like, I wouldn't want to know. Like, I you don't want to see- No, I would never see an autopsy. Wait, really? No. See, I get it because it's not, you know, it's, I'm sorry. Like, I haven't had long hair in so long. It's like catching on me. I'm like, I don't know what to do. Um, I, uh, I was super interested in it. Like, super, super interested because I- like I thought lungs were like, you know how you puncture a lung, which is like, oh, you puncture like a balloon, right? A lung is, looks like a tomato when you slice it. Like it's like, it's not, it's not hollow. Like that type of shit. I'm like, that's in here. And I don't even know what it looks like. And when they like cut open the skull and then they pull out the brain, my brain and, and the brain sat there and I was like, yo, that's you. And my brain was like, that's me. So you weren't <laughs> grossed out at all? Um, so no, but there was a moment where at the beginning where you have to separate between the human and the being. It was really hard for me for the first little bit when they were together because that was a person and it was a life and it was, you know, a son or a daughter or a father. Like it, there was a story, but the moment I could disconnect the story and then do the research that I needed to do because my character works with pathologists and I needed to see how they were with the body. And this, this pathologist named John, he uh, was so graceful. He always had a hand on the body. It was done with so much respect. It was almost like choreography. Like I was like, if I ever die or if, if I ever die, <laughs> when I die, I was like, I want you to do my autopsy. Cause it was like, he was just so gentle and like the honoring of the body. And we made sure that we put that into the show. So you always see like, there's no clunking or flipping or whatever. Like I needed to see that part cause I wouldn't have understood it. So that's sort of like the beauty of being an actor sometimes is you get to do some pretty crazy shit. Okay. <laughs> I think that's the easiest thing I've done for, for a role. So the show was very successful in Canada and overseas. Are you nervous about the American audience? Will it translate? Yeah, yeah, yeah? of course. I'm always nervous. It's like going to a new school. Like, I'm like, will they like me? Can I sit at the table? Like, it's been, you know, it's been amazing. Like our, our show, <clears throat> we were nominated this year for best drama. Um, and then myself and the, our other lead male were nominated for best uh, lead actor and actress. And it was like, I remember just like bawling. Like it was like you on like AGTV, AGT, America's Got Talent. AGT, AGT. yeah. AGT. I was so like to be recognized as an artist and not just a commodity. Like I, this is a role that I get to, like I chopped all my hair all weird and funny and I got to be kind of crazy in it. And it was one of the first times that I let like a bit of my weirdness out in a character. And so to have Canada and you know worldwide suddenly um, pick it up and run with it and celebrate it was so incredible for me. And I kind of like let that weight go. And now I'm like, shoot. I have to care again. Like I yeah. did it, that thing where I'm like, God, please like it, please. Okay. So it's a, it's a fun, it's a fun show. It's a, it's a dark comedy, but it's like, it's very human. It's just a very human, diverse, weird show. And I hope that people give it a shot and see what little Canadian television can do. Well, I mean, Canadian television's on a roll. Schitt's Creek was Canadian television, and it blew same up network. in America. Same yeah, network, same exactly. Network. Yeah, that's our that's that our, our brother sister 
maybe no pronoun it's television a sibling um yeah there's a lot like uh there's that one we had um oh moms what was it the moms show there's another one and there's there's a lot that's going out of canada and the crazy thing is is like canadians are so crazy talented we just work for americans like handmaid's tale is shot in canada like oh, it's yeah. shot in half of their crew is our crew on coroner it's just we alternate so it's like yeah, it's we got some, we got some good stuff in Canada. Yeah, I mean, I, I know a lot of production is headed up to Canada right now too, in movies. Oh yeah, oh it's it's packed here. Like it's crazy how packed it is. And it's only when do you start? More. When do you start shooting the? Would it be third season? Third season, yeah. So we um, we'll start middle of Buddha. Stop whining. <laughs> He's like, I just want to go in the backyard and play with bears. Um, we'll start. Uh, we'll start shooting the middle of September, um, and we start airing the first season on the CW on the fifth um, of August, and then we'll do our f entire first season. And then I think there's going to be like a little section of reruns, and then we're going to launch straight into our second season right after that. Because CW bought both of our seasons, which was actually pretty crazy. That's so epic. Yeah, we were very excited about that. That's I was like, I awesome. started. So I was like, yeah. I Welcome love it. I love it. What's been your, you know, because I've been, I've had lunches with, say so what? You just, you just fake drank. You were like, you brought it up and then you didn't actually take a sip. Because I just thought of something. Okay. I was like, you can take a break and have a sip if you like. Well, you know what? Like, it's a little trick that um, if you about to drink uh -huh. and then you take it away, the audience automatically feels you're about to say something like what that's strong. Uh, yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Like, because if I was like this and then I go, wait a minute, let's see, you already yeah. think, whoa, what's he about to say? Really? It's, oh yeah, you're right. It's like that type of thing. I know I'm right. That's an acting skill. I learned what, mm. what, what? So has your, what's the name of your character on the show? Jenny Cooper. Johnny, what what is it? Uh, you cut out. <laughs> Jenny, Jenny, Jenny Cooper. As you can see, I've done my research. Uh, <laughs> so, Johnny, so Johnny, Johnny Pooper, tell us about your character. <laughs> Thank you. Johnny Pooper is amazing on this show. He does all the hard work for his old friend. <laughs> he doesn't take any shit, that Johnny Pooper. I mean, he's just amazing, amazing. That's uh, Johnny Pooper, yeah. Jenny Cooper, have you got to work in your gerbil laugh for her? Because I think that would be a great characteristic when she was nervous and she would laugh and she sounds you like a what? gerbil. I'm going to, I will Easter egg a, a gerbil laugh for you in season three. <laughs> that would be amazing. I'll find, spot, I'll find a spot and I'll, I'll put just one in. And so when you watch it, you'll know, you'll be like, hey guys, that was, that's, that was for me. That that's for, for me you. right there. That's for me right that there. That's for my OG roommate. Yeah, it'll just be like a little like, I don't know, no, I'll figure out, I'll figure out. I mean, she's got to laugh at some point. She does, but I give her a different laugh so she doesn't sound quite as ridiculous as me. What's her laugh? Let me, what's her laugh? That, like that one, it's sort of like a. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's that, I keep it low. It's an exhale. My, my squawk is an inhale. It's a, not a, uh -huh. <laughs> see, I can't. If I had a choice to laugh better, I would, but I can't. It's just, it's just, it's just I don't laugh like, who laughs like that? <laughs> what am you I just did for? that. Like, That's exactly what you just did. <laughs> That's what I sounded like? You're like Jenny Cooper <laughs> is laughing like a man for two seasons. <laughs> Perfect. That's why you should watch it, you guys. Come see Jenny Cooper. Johnny Pooper laugh like it. <laughs> Okay, I've had many lunches with you, Serena Swan, where you were always, I almost got it. I almost got it. I'm sad I didn't get the role. What has been your, because, you know, I, I like to do some inspiring stuff on this podcast, too. Uh, what was your lowest low in Hollywood, and what got you out of it? Um, it's interesting, because there's, like, so many different variations of low in this world or in this in this industry it can be everything from like 
thinking that you're going to get a job to getting a job and then having it canceled. I think one of the most interesting experiences for my ego and for realizing the danger of projection um, was going from uh, not working for a year to booking Feud, where I got to work with Susan Sarandon and Jessica Lange. Then I booked uh, the new love interest of The Rock on Ballers, and then had a fight between uh, uh, Marvel and HBO to get me on the new Marvel television show, where I was the lead female, and they were like, get ready. You don't even know what's going to happen. Like you got to get your passport. We are going to have, you know, we're going to have premieres all over the world. It's going to be an IMAX movie and then a television show. It's unprecedented. I had the head of Marvel television call me and literally be like, I have three words for you. Welcome to Marvel. And I was just like, <gasps> like, yeah. my God, I've been like so long cut to they had to write me off Ballers because I was on Marvel and Marvel was one of the most panned TV shows in history, The Inhumans. It just epically failed. Um, and I left the show with zero jobs and a shaved head and was like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> this, is, this is a choice. And what I realized through it was if I allowed the outcome to negate the experience, acting would not be for me <clears throat> because it's not about, <clears throat> it's not about whether or not people like it. I mean, you want, you obviously want people to enjoy your work, but if what you're doing is only for another person, then you miss out what it actually does for you. And what that did for me was being on set of feud allowed me to work with some of my heroes and to sit there in a room. I was talking to my friend Diego, who was on uh, Scream Queens, and he was like, don't bring your sides to set. He's like, just don't do it. It's just a thing with Ryan. Just don't do it. And I was like, okay. So sitting there without my sides, nothing to fall back on and being totally content with watching and listening and talking when I needed to and being silent when I didn't and just being able to hold my own in a character because I've never really been asked to be able to do um, uh, a person of that statue before I played Anne Bancroft um, and character acting. So being able to sit in a character was phenomenal. And then walking to set on Ballers and being like, day one, like, all right, DJ, we're going to make out. Cool. Let's How do this. That? How was that on day one? Is it weird? Of course. Of course it's weird. But I have to say, one of the things that was really amazing about working with him was the night before I started Ballers, I got a text being like, hey, super excited you're on set. Can't wait to work with you. I think you're like super talented and like, I'm going to try my best not to fuck up. See you tomorrow, DJ. And I was like, who the fuck is D DJ Dwayne Johnson? <laughs> oh my God. And I was like, cool. And I was like, I guess I get to call him DJ now. But it broke the ice. You know what I mean? And I just wrote back and was like, looking forward to it. I'll give you a big hug. Like, we're, we've got this. And it was my character was very different and we kind of thought about it before because I was like the more of a of a strong woman you make her it'll make him seem like a stronger man because if she's the woman that he chooses um to be like he, that was his ex-fiance it was somebody that really meant a lot to him if she's kind of like all the other girls on the show that you know they've kind of been in and out of where it's like topless and all this it doesn't it doesn't honor their relationship in a way that I would want it to and so really being able to like go on that journey with him and be like, let's get some like substance relationship in here and fighting, you know, the powers that be to like show nipples. I was like, I don't want to. And like coming into like walking on set every day and being like, these are my boundaries and this is how I feel and I'm not intimidated. And, and growing on that show um, was really amazing, not only as an actor, but as a woman. And then going over to Marvel and watching them shave my head and be so excited. Like they brought in like, um, like a therapist person to be like, okay, we're going to hold your hand as you do it. And I was like, I don't need you. I was right. like, I'm so excited, like shave it off. And I've always wanted to shave my head. So all of these experiences were something that I grew, that I learned from, that I had so much fun doing that like stripped off some of the old bullshit that the industry put on me of what I should or shouldn't do, what I was capable of. And just because they didn't work, didn't mean 
or just the fact that you could say like there was a failure involved doesn't mean that I was a failure. I mean, yeah, would have I liked to continue on ballers? Yeah, but whatever. Like that's, you know, even saying that right now, I'm like, oh, I shouldn't say that. I'm like, no, you should. Like I had fun. I, that's just how it goes. It, it sucks that, you know, Marvel didn't work out and I had to go over to that side. And would I love to do Marvel again? Absolutely. It's like, if I let my mind wander and get the projection, it's, it's kind of the next iteration of what I learned when I was really young um, or when I first started acting like 12 years ago. What I used to do is I would get the audition and then I get the call back and then I would wait. And in that period of like, it's down to you and one other girl, I would imagine getting the role in my head. I would imagine the paycheck. I would imagine what I would buy with the paycheck. I'd imagine how my life would change. I would imagine how that role would now become this role and that role and that would lead to my future. And so from this one tiny role, I had built an entire future that involved a house and a car and social status and reaching my dreams of like acting and all this. And if I didn't get it, not only did I lose the guest star on Supernatural, I lost all of it with it. So it was suddenly this devastating loss. It wasn't just a moment. It was an entire like movement in my life. And that became really devastating. And I realized I had to be able to distinguish and differentiate between opportunity and outcome. And so this was just the next side of that of when I did get the opportunity then to not. Um, now, you know. I know you can say this in hindsight, but when you're going through something like a show that's just being panned and you're like one of the lead faces on it, like, it's great that you can say that in hindsight, but when it's actually happening. Oh, you want to cut a bit. Huh? Up. Okay. <laughs> so and and people are saying <laughs> awful things. I mean, I would imagine that's really tough to take. I remember I was in the dressing room. I feel like it was like the talk or it was one of those shows crying before I had to go on and promote the show um, because I didn't know what to do. Like, I didn't know how to authentically get up there and represent myself in a way that I believed what I was saying. And that also didn't, that showed that kind of veneer of like, it's all okay. Cause on the inside, there was like a kid that was really, really hurt and sad that this didn't work. But I remember going on set and being like, this feels fast. This feels very fast interesting like it was like it was moving faster than than what seemed like it was capable of almost so it wasn't something that completely surprised me when what it was all, moving fast just like from the moment that i auditioned to the moment that i was in hawaii like i went and did a test for a role that was like imaginary role not releasing anything like it's a woman talking to an imaginary dog and a mute man and i was like if this isn't Marvel, I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. And then the second time I came back and I was like, oh, I know you. You're the head of Marvel television. Interesting. Um, and, uh, and it was just me. And that was really interesting that normally you test against five or six girls and it was only me. Um, and I remember like driving in the car listening to like Alice Smith, her song, She, and just being like, I'm she, like I'm going to get it. And... Uh, and looking at that and being like, from that <clears throat> to drive into an interview after it was panned, trying to listen to the same song of being like, it's okay, girl, you got this. <laughs> You're allowed to like, like, it's interesting. Like they, cause they still ask you to be like, you gotta, you gotta sell this. Like it's the shit. And you're like, mm hmm So finding that honesty of like wh what I wanted to talk about, which would be my character and would be about the fact that I Photoshopped my face on Natalie Portman's head five years before that and was like, I'm gonna shave my head for a role. And that's something that I wanna do. And, you know, being able to do a TED talk afterwards on like the hate and the bullying I got for having my head shaved and- Did you really <laughs> go through that? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Crazy, I like Wait, lost wait, so people said, like would bully you for not having hair? Yeah, like it was crazy. So like the first thing that happened is the first time I, I posted a picture with my head shaved, uh, I lost like, thousands and thousands of followers. And the ones that didn't unfollow me decided to write their opinions on how I ruined myself and how I looked like a boy and like, why did you shave your handles off? And like, why are you some like feminist pig now that thinks you need to ruin your face in order to be able to like stand up for women? Like- Oh, wow. Like, I didn't- It was super degrading. 
Yeah. That's and just, um, yeah. A lot of people telling me what, what they think I should look like or how I should look at myself. And there's that very small line between how you look at me, whether or not that's going to change how I look at myself. And this is all what my Ted talk is about was like, when I was younger, I cut my hair short for the first time and I allowed it to change how I looked at myself because everybody suddenly saw me as a little boy. I wasn't a value, all of that. And I grew my hair out and went to Hawaii and came back. And all of a sudden I was like a value and I like leaned into it and I did Maxim and I did all of those things because that's what people told me was like, how you look, you need to be doing this. And I was like, huh? Okay. And then in my twenties, I came out and I was like, no girl, this is not what you need to be doing. This is how you look has nothing to do with who you are, that's your genetics. And if my entire value is based on something that I have nothing, I can't control, then my life sucks. Like I want to find something else that matters. And so, yeah, it's like, that's the beauty of these roller coasters is like, I can say that's the lowest point of my career, you know, watching our worldwide premiere get cut down from like Tokyo, Australia, Dubai, all of this to like, a little half night at the Chinese theater with like wow people and having to watch walk a carpet with my head held high. Like I had to hide the fact that my head was shaved for six months with wigs. Oh. I like sewed tracks into a baseball hat to hide it because of the big reveal. Yeah. Well, it looks Sorry. like you're still like, you know, wearing wigs though. <laughs> <laughs> Your extensions and my good friend <laughs> here in uh, in Vancouver. She actually works for Bellamy, and she was like, "Girl, do you want some hair extensions for fun?" And I was like, "Yes, I do." She has an amazing salon out here called IS Salon, and I was like, "I've never had my hair long enough in the past four years to get extensions in." And I was like, "Make me a mermaid." Okay. <laughs> So, so well, you've been in a cabin, so you wouldn't know. Do people react to you differently now that you have this fake long hair? <laughs> oh, I mean, it was the first thing you said to me. You're like, "Oh, look at your hair. Is that real?" I was like, "Yeah, I'm a chia pet. I just like pour water on my head." I'm like, <laughs> oh, <no." laughs> "Like, uh, yeah." I have a lot of people that are like, "Oh God, you look so much younger," and like, I haven't posted a picture yet of this, um, but I'm waiting. I'm kind of like. Mm. Like I, like the people that are going to comment on this, if you look so much better, you should always have long hair. Like, yeah. you, and I'm literally going to take these out and be like, sorry, what were you saying? Well, <laughs> were you I saying mean, like? you know, some celebrities have gone to the route of uh, just turning off comments. Have you ever thought about that on Instagram where it's just people thumbsing up and that, that can't comment on your page? Yeah. I mean, it's weird to me and let me tell you why it's because look i did agt one of the biggest summer shows and you know i would say 99 percent of the comments are great you'll get one or two yeah. that are awful and those yeah. one or two stick with you and i was talking to a couple <laughs> friends i was talking to a couple friends like that just turn the whole thing off i mean they they keep on the instagram but they just turn the comments off and they go it's so amazing to just post something and then not care about it because yeah. I, I think we're trained now to post, check back what they say, check back what they say. Because it's so great to post and not even worry about that because nobody's going to say anything. They'll give you likes, but you're not checking back for likes. You know, you just want to see the comments. I was so excited when in Canada, they actually turned off the likes for a while. I'm not, I think it might be back, but they actually stopped like publicly. You couldn't see how many likes were on a photo. Oh, oh okay. Like, yeah. I was like, that's amazing. I was like, that would be such a lovely thing. I have thought about it. I think with my activism work, sometimes I, w within the comments, I can have a lot of really positive conversations with people that I get educated and I can also share my opinion. So I think it's funny that you say this because I think there's actually a, a balance that I've been toying with for anything personal to turn off the comments and anything that's more public facing to turn them on to have a discussion because I don't want to just post something political or something um, environmental and then not allow people to be able to educate me on my perception of what might be happening. Um, but I also don't want to post a picture of me with my hair and have to be degraded or, yeah. I, and I think the reason why I haven't, and I think that's the same as a lot of us is because we allow, we like the positive, 
Um, but if we allow the positive to hit us, we have to let the negative to hit us. And the negative is like a sucker punch and the positive is a pat on the back. It's so interesting how like one sucker punch will rock you, but like a million pats on the back, you're like, Ping. yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a very weird dynamic, but like the one or two will stick with you, but I'm learning, you know, I learn. I'm at a place where it really doesn't bother me, but I'll think about it for a second and be like, oh, that you're an asshole. And then I just move yeah. on, you know? Cause to me, if you, who has time to just go on people's pages and say negative things? Like that's just lots, such, of, people. <laughs> lots of people. Yeah. And that's the problem. We got too much time right now. We got to, so yeah. also you're talking about activism. How are you saving the world right now? Cause you're always in another country trying to save somebody. What are you doing now? Right now I'm saving the bears. Um, no, I, <laughs> no, you're chasing the bears. Chasing bears in, a, in an ethical way. I'm, give me, please, 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 please. <laughs> um, well, I'm still running my ed tech company. We, uh, we do an education technology company with my partner, Andrew, um, business partner. Everyone's always like, oh, your partner. And I'm like, no, oh, my business partner. Um, my, uh, who I've known for like five years, he's amazing. Um, and we started this uh, sort of social emotional learning curriculum um, that ties in state standards. So teachers can teach it without having to um, sort of water down the curriculum that they already have to teach. Like they have to teach certain things in grade six. So if we can help them by creating engaging content um, by using like amazing documentaries and um, experts and producing these sort of six to seven minute videos on everything from um, uh, like biomimicry or mind mapping. We actually did, and I know this is a bit of a non sequitur, we did this amazing one on biomimicry recently, which is basically uh, biomemesis. So it's like mimicking anything in nature. Did you know that there are spiders? So spi there's certain spiders that have a UV indicator in their web. So Birds, they were like studying, scientists were studying that a bird would fly at a web and then miss it. And then a bug would fly at the web and go straight into it. So they're like, for some reason, a bird can see the UV indicator in the web, but a bug can't. So they extracted it and then put it in window panes and birds stopped flying into these window panes because it had the same UV indicator in it. Boom. Look at that. Right? Good for the birds. Good for the birds. I was like, Exactly. But I was like, how genius is that? We never would have thought of it as just like mere humans. So we teach kids sustainability. We teach them responsibility. We teach them um, being able to understand themselves better and the world around them. Um, so yeah, so we're in our third year now of that. And we're just about to launch our new curriculum around sort of homeschooling and figuring out what's best within this, uh, this COVID crisis. And so, uh, so when are you coming back to America? Are you going to stay out there until it's all done here? I gotta come back soon. Like, I think by the time this is out, actually, I'll be back in America. Oh, cause you're gonna um, have to do press, but you're gonna have to have a good uh, internet. So you gotta come back. <laughs> it's been pretty good. It's actually been pretty good. It like went out a few times. If you see me like, huh? I'm like trying to make sure I'm like, I think I know what he just said. I think, okay, we're back. Um, yeah, I'll have better internet and I'll be back home in LA. And then I have to pack up my house and get ready to go to Toronto where we shoot the show for five months now because we got uh, a couple extra episodes added on this season as well so when are you leaving for toronto um well it looks like i'm gonna have to do another two-week quarantine <clears throat> in toronto so probably at the end of august i'll head back to canada Look and then uh, my and i'm gonna go live in another cabin but in toronto <laughs> <laughs> so so is this the season where I get to be on the show? I mean, where I get to like be. Absolutely. Like, maybe in the background or something, you know? Uh, we're going to make you like the most talented, like emotional dead body you have ever seen. We're just going to like. I can't be a dead body. Like I, I can't, that's something I will never play because I just don't like death. And just to know this is what I would look like when I'm dead. No, I pass. It's a hard pass, but thank you. Okay. Yeah. It's a hard pass. The funny thing is, if you're like, I'm just going to make it really morbid for a second. No, the crazy thing is, is that our actors who play dead bodies have to close, like I have to hold their breath. And then we actually have to zip them. In, and every single time I zip them into a body bag, I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Like, <laughs> I would freak the fuck out. I'm claustrophobic. So I would just be like, ah! like, I would not be okay. Maybe we'll make you like a... Uh, Another problem is you couldn't zip me up because I would make you laugh too much. 
the bag would just be going like laughing going exactly exactly they'd be like okay sorry yo you're fired we can't <laughs> <laughs> this scene is taken it's taken Serena a hundred tries to close this bag. We got a problem going on over here. We're wasting tape. Seven hundred and eighty-two. <laughs> <laughs> You're fired. I know they didn't get season three because she couldn't stop laughing. No, I would love you to come be on the show. I mean, it's in Toronto. Canada just has to start letting Americans in. That's yeah. the problem. Hopefully, hopefully they they won't till we get our stuff together so like it's all about being safe now so you know i don't want to get into it but it's about being safe so yeah. uh august 5th corner cw cw yeah. what time i think it's on at nine okay i know it's not 10 no it is nine because i had to i had to voice over all of the swear words out because we say fucking shit on the show and do you really yeah, and because it's a nine o'clock show, if it's a 10 o'clock show, you can still say shit on the CW, I think. But if you're a nine o'clock show, so now you'll see me and I'm like, shoot. <laughs> God, I can, I can say, oh, God damn it. I think I can say God yeah, damn yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And I, but I, I, I so she, she's gone from like a shit person to a shoot person. Shoot and person. then there's one time I'm in the car and I go, fuck you in the car. And they were like, <laughs> My alt was freak you, and I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I was like, it's in the first, it's the first episode. I was like, people are gonna turn off the show. I, yeah, I would. I would. I would. What is freak you? Yeah. What is that? What is that? So I just make a noise. I think I just go like, ride. <laughs> but those are like my least favorite things ever to turn like swear words into. You know, I was like, can I just say fork? And like, maybe she watches the happy place. <laughs> fork. Fork you. I don't know. But it's fun. It's a fun show. And I appreciate the support. And I'm excited for people to be able to see. Because it's a book series, right? It's a best-selling book series in the UK. And I'm excited for people to be able to see their Jenny Cooper as my Jenny Cooper. and see Johnny Pooper in the building. Come see Johnny Pooper. Johnny I'm Pooper. Karana. <laughs> <laughs> Karana. <laughs> Too close, too close. Coroner. Coroner. Yeah, I know. They were literally like, okay, so you have to just make sure that they know that it's also funny. I was like, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's great. But I think it's going to be successful. I think you'll do well. I can't wait. I, you know, we got to hang out soon. Um, yeah, when I'm back, I will. I've only driven past your house recently to drop off masks. I know you were so sweet. You made our whole family masks. We appreciate it. We still rock them. Yeah, because we couldn't let you in. You know, I don't know what you got. I mean, I, I would. <laughs> Where have I been? I mean, I was in the house with my mom with Corona. Um, no, I, uh, I I felt so bad for you. And I was like, also, I was like, we have to like make the little mini masks. I like went back to my Waldorf stage and I was just like sewing them all. And I was like, this is so Aww. much fun. So yeah. Are I'm you still to... knitting? Are you still knitting for fun? Am I? I mean, yeah, of course. I like literally, I'm so excited to go back to set because I'm going to be knitting everybody their Christmas presents. So just wait. You're getting oh, it. I can't wait. I can't wait. You've turned into an old woman. I tell <laughs> you, like just knitting and... I know I'm single, so I'm like, oh girl, I probably should like hide a few of those, <laughs> a few of those things. Although I'm like, I'm a proud knitter. Maybe I'll meet somebody that yeah. likes sweaters and girlfriends who knit. <laughs> And hide in the forest. I sound like <laughs> It'll be on your single profile. Do you like sweaters? <laughs> <laughs> I am sweater perfect weather. for you. Be, my song will just be sweater weather the whole time. There you go. There you go. Well, good Fair luck in, in not being single anymore uh, <laughs> and lonely. It's fine. Um, you know, the world will keep Maybe. moving on. But I hope I hope you, you know, find somebody one day. I'm I'm sure I will. I uh, uh I'm building. Build. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> you! You're terrible. This is literally this. Everybody, welcome. This would be our dinner table when we live together. We're yes. just like us talking shit to each other, playing loud music to keep each other awake, and uh, yeah. But that's the beautiful thing is like I'm so happy we remain friends through all of this, and I've always been able to rely on you if I was having a good day or a bad day or a total shit day where I thought the world was imploding and you always let me cry and then would make fun of me. And that yes. was the best thing that I ever, that was the best thing that I needed was just, you know, unconditional love, but allowing me to just, you know, both of us to just like 
flower and I'm just yeah. so proud of what those are. And I can't wait, when are you back on AGT? Oh my God. So I can't, s oh, well, this is, I'll cut this part. This will air. Oh, so I just made the judges cut. So I move on to the next round. Yeah. So yeah, August 11th, I'm going to be on the live show. So it's going to be exciting. Oh, yeah. That's so exciting. Okay. Amazing. So August 11th, I'll have to watch it. Yeah. have to watch it. Yeah. We just like cut back into the conversation somehow. Oh yeah, it's no problem. Like we just had a secret conversation, everybody, that you can't know about. Sorry. No, they'll later. hear some of it. They'll they'll hear some of that conversation. They won't hear other things about that conversation. So they heard some, but they didn't hear all. Yes, we do have secret conversations. Yes, absolutely, there absolutely. Conversations that um, I'm just you know, mom's the word. Yeah. Okay. Jenny, Jenny Pooper just keeps Jenny it. Jenny Pooper's keeps in the house. Serinda, I love you. I love you too. I can't believe we're ending on that note. That's hilarious. Yeah, um, I know. I, but you know, you gave me all you got. <laughs> I gave everything I have. I'm literally sweaters and bears and all of that. I just, yeah, uh, I, I feel, you know, I'm good at uh, feeling people out and I feel like you have nothing left. So <laughs> we're gonna my coffee's done. My dog's whining. It's, it's time, time to go. go. Find some bears in the woods. And, yeah. you know, as soon as I'm back in LA, I'll come and drive by your house and wave. <laughs> the bar in my germ car and uh, <laughs> your wife and your kids lots of love and but i honestly can't wait to see you and um keep being awesome babe i'm cheering you you on too okay we'll talk soon okay cheers. Cheers. Cheer oh yeah cheers cheers, cheers. Okay. bye, bye. Oh, air, oh i just spilled my drink because of you look at that air hugs okay at the end bye bye